Hey, what's up, everybody? BDF44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Los Angeles Lakers played against the Brook, and it was not pretty at all through three quarters. They were blowing the Lakers all the way out. And then <laughs> Lakers turned it around, made it a, a pretty much of a game. They, they cut it to 10, and then they further cut into that lead and even brought it all the way back and made it a tie game and we had an opportunity um you know but we just could not kind of you know take advantage of what was in front of us uh what you're going to see highlights of mostly is uh just the hammer dunk that uh claxton had on lebron james down the stretch uh it was a hell of a lob that was given to him and to be honest with you the only reason why that play was even possible is because we're running lebron james at the center position one of these days, we're going to understand that we cannot punt the center position. We can't forego size out there. There's no way for the Los Angeles Lakers to win basketball games if they're going to continue to play small ball. <laughs> I said this when AD was down there, and I'll say it without AD. We don't have a good small ball lineup for ourselves because we don't have defense at our guard spots. If we had good defensive guards, we could get away with it. You understand what I'm saying? But we do not. <laughs> with that being said, boy, am I happy to see Stanley Johnson on this team. Let me tell you, Stanley Johnson was extremely helpful on the defensive end. We were a lot better on the floor because of his presence, just bodying people up and tracking people like KCP and Caruso used to do. He actually put his, um, his, his body on somebody. And that's what we've been missing. We don't have a single person on this team who did what Stanley Johnson did for us tonight. Nobody. Like, literally no one. That's why I'm so uh, adamant on us getting Grant and or Simmons because we need defense that bad. Um, but Stanley Johnson was just a, just, a, a, just a taste of what it is to actually have defense on your team once again. Just We just got a hint of it, and it was wonderful. So that's one thing I want to uh, say also uh, – Speaking of wonderful, it was great to have Malik Monk back. His 20 points was huge. Uh, his competence scoring the basketball was a welcome sight. We have not had that from our role players lately. He just scores so easily. He makes his threes. He makes our team that much better. So to have him back was everything. Um, I liked having Darren Collison out there, even though he got two back-to-back four-point fouls, four-point play fouls, which was just kind of frustrating for the team. Uh, I think that was at the second quarter. I was able to see that. Uh, even though I didn't see the entire game, I, I did catch glimpses of certain pockets, and that was one of them. It was just very frustrating, but he made a fantastic play on the other end, uh, creating a play for LeBron James to get an easy bucket. So you can kind of see how the ball pops well with him on the floor. Um, you can see how quick his his uh, his tenacity is to the basketball, how fast he gets to 50-50 balls, stuff like that. He's going to help our team a lot. Uh, he's in shape and stuff like that. So I think Rob did some good things uh, bringing in those two guys. Um and then I think one of the reasons why we were able to come back and, and actually make a game out of this is because of all of that stuff working um, in tandem. Uh, so, you know, 13 turnovers, you know me. I say 14 is what we want to have. We only had 13 a night, and we only lost by seven points. Even in, in, in down the stretch, we had a real chance to win the game. So uh, as long as we keep our turnovers down, rebound the ball as well as we did tonight, I think we hurt ourselves by not using Dwight tonight, not having a center on the floor. Um and I think if we would have had one, I think it would have made a lot of a difference out there. Um, our guys made up for it. You know, obviously LeBron James scored huge. I think he had 40-plus tonight. Uh, Russell Westbrook did not score the ball very well tonight, but he got some assists, uh, got got some rebounds. He was definitely hard on the glass. Carmelo Anthony had a huge game tonight, probably the best game of his uh, Laker tenure thus far. I think he had like 17 and 11 rebounds, huge. But all in all, we lost. And, uh, you know, I, what I was impressed with as well, since we want to talk about things we're impressed with, is the free throw shooting. We, we definitely shot above 85% tonight from the line. That's very rare. So there's a lot of stuff you could take from this game and say, yo, the Lakers played better than they have in, in a weeks. But unfortunately, you just could not get the victory. Um, and, and, it, and it came down to a couple plays. So, you know, even though we were down by 23 with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, you know, uh, we still made a heck of a game out of it, a heck of a roaring comeback. Uh, just couldn't close it out. Now, I want to tell you what happened because I, I've been foregoing saying it. But Russell Westbrook, man, I tell you, brother, I tell you, 
it's it's a it's a pleasure having his energy, but when he decides to put his head down and just kind of just do without scanning the floor to see what's going on, looking at the clock to see what's going on, he really doesn't serve his purpose very well. Uh, he plays straight into the defense's hands when he when he moves this way, and uh, we saw a lot of that tonight. Him just kind of just, just bulldozing and not finishing, you know, and that's really what it came down to. We were in a situation where we were down by three. Um, he was driving at the basket and, you know, attacked the rim. And, you know, the rims blocked the shot. <laughs> he got stuffed. He did not make the dunk. It was an old man situation there. He just couldn't get off the ground. And, unfortunately, LeBron James is wide open in the corner for three. Instead of trying to dunk that ball, maybe he scans the floor, looks around, makes that pass. Gets the ball to the king, hits the three, we're tied Instead, he bricks the dunk. No foul is called. Ball goes the other way and never got a chance after that. That was it. It was less than a minute to go. We're down three. I love aggression. You try to get foul. I love attacking the basket. I'm never going to get mad at that kind of stuff, but you have to be smart. S intellect is going to pay off more so in this game of basketball than, than hard work, man. Just like Sh Shannon Sharp always says, you, you got to play smart, bro. And... And, and that's what's going to help you win. It's not just playing hard. It's just doing things properly. It's, it's looking, reading, and reacting. And and because of Russell Westbrook's mistake, um, it cost us the game. I'm just going to call it what it was, man. It cost us the game. It wasn't the only thing that cost us the game. But you got to understand, we had been struggling the whole game. Everybody had done everything they needed to do to get within that position. That dunk that I was referring to, that lob where LeBron had gotten dunked on... <laughs> I was right around that same time. It was either before that play or after. But the point was, we were in a position where we didn't have a lot of time left. We needed one shot to tie the game. And it wasn't a two. That's not what we needed. He is not a good free throw shooter. So being aggressive, getting to the line, it's 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 helpful if you make the, the free throws and con connect on the shot. But let's say he gets to the line, if they if they call it, and he only makes one, it's like you, you didn't help your team, <clears throat> you know? You didn't help your team. What we needed was a three. And tried to get it the old-fashioned way and failed. And it's just like, brother, you know, it's Christmas Day. Bron's going for 40. We got players coming back. We got players going out. Got stars in the arena. It's it's. Crypto.com day. You got all this going on. You were down by 23. The team's on a four-game losing streak. You got all this momentum stuff happening here. And you need a win so bad against a team of whom you hope you'll be on the end, you know, at, at the end to see. On a rare occasion where KD wasn't playing, Kyrie wasn't playing, who would have been playing since they've activated him for road games, we got a chance to go up against this team and get a victory. In this fashion, and it came down to just making the bad decision and ultimately not being able to convert on the play. <laughs> Russell Westbrook's great at giving you momentum, but there's not a single soul I've seen play this game that can not that can take it away like him. Nobody can snatch momentum away from your team like Russell Westbrook. And this was not only him snatching momentum away from that play, not only him snatching momentum away from that game, he snatched momentum away from us entirely because of the perfect storm of everything that was going on in that situation. All of it, everything that had to do with that situation came down to that one play and he could not give us what we needed. And that's, that's just what it was, man. That's just what it was. I'm not saying if we win this game, we're going to go on to win the championship. I'm not saying that today us losing this game really changed anything at all. It didn't. We're a bad team who's playing bad and this is just a product of that. And I'm not here to make excuses about players going in and out of the lineup because, like I said, Brooklyn looked worse than us on paper today. This was the first game where I can honestly say we were favored to win because of what the rosters look like, and we just did not play well. We let Patty Mills go off for 34 and 7 assists. He ain't never had a game like that in his life, y'all. Not in his entire career has he ever had a game like that. Keita Bates Jop. In the previous game, had a 30-point game where he won 11 for 11. He ain't never had a game like that in his career. Never. 
You're seeing this theme taking place here, you guys. And I said it. If a team is struggling, or if a guy wants to make a name for himself, or if something, you know what I mean? If he's surging, the Lakers are exactly who he wants to see. So let me tell you what's about to happen to us. We're about to run into the Houston Rockets. And what do they have? A player by the name of Jalen Green, who's coming back from injury, who looks a lot better right now than he did before he got hurt. Just like I always tell you guys about guys who come back from injury, focus on their bodies, now they're in shape and they can come back and they're even better. That's exactly what's happening here. So Jalen Green is probably going to drop about 30 plus on us. He's going to probably have the game of his life on us. What we think he's about to be, I predict he's going to show us that. Yeah, about to get our heads knocked off by a bad Houston team because we can't keep up with them because they are young. And just like every young team, they're going to run us out the gym. It's a fact. It's just what's going to happen. Um, so, as I always say, one ear to the Lakers, two eyes off them. You know, I made the mistake of trying to watch a little bit of that game tonight. Shouldn't have. And it's cut and dry, man. Nobody pays me <laughs> to to promote the Lakers and tell you guys to watch them. What I do is exactly what I would expect everybody else to do when the team sucks. Pay attention to what's going on around the team <laughs> and do something better with your time when they're playing. Straight up. And until somebody pays me to say something else, that's what it is. Because I'm not going to lie to the people. I'm not going to do that. It ain't no point in watching a team who is about to lose every game they play and doesn't have a pick to show for it at the end of the season when they suck so bad. And that's exactly what's about to happen to us if we don't get our crap together with this roster. Because we don't have a pick this year, we don't have a pick next year, and I don't even think we have a pick the year after that. Because of this AD trade that we made, that we're so happy to have made because it got us a championship. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is what we're dealing with. And look, I've been through this. I know how this is. I watched Sacre. I watched uh, Smush. I watched all. I know I know how this goes. Trey Murphy. I remember those guys. Was it Troy Murphy? Yeah. I remember. Some of the worst players I ever played the Lakers uniform. I watched them run around for three hours every night. And you know what? I realized it was three hours I could have been doing something else. So I don't, I don't play with the Lakers like that. And it doesn't mean I'm not paying attention. It's the complete opposite. I'm paying very close attention. I just ain't going to watch them do this. I refuse. So I'll be listening to Alan Siwa. I'll be watching the Shay, Shay Sharp. I'll be listening to all the guys, you know, talk about the Lakers. I'll look at the box score. I'll watch the little 10-minute highlights. But me sitting there for three hours while they turn the ball over 13, 14 times and miss dunks and shoot 28% from three, that was another thing. It was the third straight game where we shot under 30% from the three. We continue to shoot the ball like we're good at it or something. I don't know. And another thing I'm not too happy about, respectfully, because this guy does have some really good games, but Wayne Ellington is not a starter in this league. He's not. He can shoot the ball. He can help us. I don't have no problem with him on the roster getting 15, 16 minutes a game, which is what we're giving him. But if we're asking him to come out and start the game for us, you're never going to have any success. <laughs> never. Why? Respectfully, because I like Wayne so much. He can't defend, bro. He can't defend, and he doesn't put the ball on the ground. Can't do it. He just can't dribble. There are situations where he'll catch the ball in open court and won't drive at the basket because his handle's so bad. He's not a starter in this league. I'm sorry. It just is what it is. We've got to stop this nonsense. One of the reasons why we continue to lose is not because the roster is what it is. It's because of how we use what it is that we have. Half the time, we don't have a center on the floor, and we wonder why we have situations like we saw with Claxton. That's not an issue with COVID protocol. That's an issue with the roster itself. That's an issue with you not using Dwight Howard when he's rostered to play. You got to put him on the floor, and you got to live with the results. And if you don't do that, you're going to have situations where you're going to get out-rebounded, which we were lucky not to have happen. But most importantly, we're going to have situations where we're just going to get pushed around, dunked on, rebound over, etc. Guys are taller than us, so they're getting easy buckets, etc. You know, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's basketball, man. It's not, it's not deeper than that. And we can sit up here all day and talk about these players going in and out of this lineup of COVID and we haven't had our full spectrum. But that's bull crap, fam. I'll tell you why it's bull crap. Because there are things we can do with the roster that we have each and every night that can give us a better chance to win than the crap that we do. The small ball nonsense that, that Frank Vogel's been on all season, it doesn't work. It ain't worked, ain't gonna work. But we keep on doing it. <laughs> It's Wayne Ellington starting crap. It doesn't work. This playing um, Avery Bradley big minutes, it doesn't work. 
DJ doesn't work. It's a lot of stuff that doesn't work, and we just keep on going. Uh, some of the things I did like, since we want to talk about positive things, I, I did like some of the ways we were cutting tonight, using LeBron James cutting into the basket. Um, some of the way he was playing off of uh, off of Russell Westbrook tonight was really good off the off the by off the uh, you know off the basketball, doing a whole lot of good stuff there. <laughs> Um, you know, cutting and making himself available in the paint and stuff like that. He was very aggressive, you know, very aggressive. I, I, I would have loved to have seen us have a better shot selection uh, overall tonight. I thought our shot selection wasn't good. Um, some of the shots we were taking, particularly in the first half, some of those lazy jumpers put us in a position to uh, have the deficit that we had. But ultimately, you know, with, with guys rebounding the ball from their positions very well and ultimately having like I said Stanley Johnson Malik Monk scoring easy buckets stuff like that it really really contributed to us getting back in the game and that's that's just what I like to see something something to be encouraged by got to continue to use Stanley Johnson uh THT his basketball IQ is not where it needs to be you guys I, I love THT's prospect as a player but I really really need them to push him back down the depth chart man like I'm not saying you mo- remove him entirely but um, we we got to push him down some. He's not a starter. As bad as we need his foot speed and his length, he he's just so terrible as it pertains to shot selection. He's one of the worst selectors of shots I've ever seen. Like literally, he's he just takes the worst shots consistently all the time. If he's not driving at the basket, chances are he's launching up something he has no business launching. And because he doesn't yet get it, he's a real liability to us offensively. Like seriously, it's bad. Because a lot of times he'll pass up opportunities to pass the ball to guys who are open, stuff like that. And while that in and of itself in a vacuum is something you can live with from a young player, I'm going to say this and I'm going to mean it. Not while Russell Westbrook's on the floor with him at the same time. I can't put up with both of them at the same time, fam. That's the issue. You can only have one guy playing like that. You can't have two guys playing like that. That's too many mistakes taking place at once on the floor at the same time with ball handlers. It just can't happen. You got to pick one of them, and you can't play them together. I hate to say it. You can't have them both on the floor at the same time, period. Until THT gets his basketball IQ where, to where it needs to be, he is too much of a liability right now. It's, it's just there's so many different holes that we have, and it's not just him. It's like if we had a center, you could mask some of those mistakes. You see what I'm saying? Hey, that's the issue. Those issues aren't so bad if you get me Jakob Pertl right now. Those issues are not going to be so bad if you get me Clint Capella right now. Do you see what I'm saying? It's literally that simple. If you go get me Wendell Carter Jr. right now, those issues go away. All we need is somebody big to help mask those issues like normal basketball teams have. I'm not going to sit here and say the Lakers have the worst guards in the league. We don't. Every guard is going to be exposed in this lineup. If he isn't a lockdown Drew Holiday defender, he's going to look like this in this lineup. And so will any other basketball team that doesn't have a center in the NBA. You've got to have a big man on the floor. And going small ball, hey, some teams aren't going to make you pay for it. But you got to understand something about small ball. You can turn it off. Every team has a center or somebody 6'10 or somebody big that they can put on the floor to remedy any issues that the Lakers are running into running small ball. Small ball has to be something you can you can audible out of. And we can't audible out of it. That's the problem. We're constantly going small ball. So our, our, our bigs don't exist. Our smalls are exposed. Our mediums are being exposed because they're not bigs and they're asked to play big. It's just, it's all on Rob, man. I, I can get mad at all of our, you know, our coaches and decisions with this roster and I have been but at the end of the day if you don't roster a real actual center then it's it's always going to be an excuse to go small and have these issues happen you know you got to get us something better than DJ and Dwight man and like I said I love Stanley Johnson you're bringing me Isaiah Thomas who's probably going to have to disappear because he hasn't played as well as we'd like him to picked up uh, Collison I think that's going to be a good pickup all these guys are great man some of these guys we can keep, and when our team gets back, we're even better. Because, like, Stanley Johnson, he should be staying for the rest of the season. But the problem is, as long as we don't have a big, like a legitimate, actual NBA center, <laughs> more of what you saw tonight from Claxton will continue to happen. LeBron's going to continue to get dunked on. He's not a center. He never was. 
He is not a five by any stretch of the imagination. And I can argue that he's been getting away as a four. He was always a three. He was always a three. He's still a three. But everybody want to play him at the four, and he's great as the four, so I never get mad at that. But once you start having him guard big players or trying to think he's about to do something at the, at the five spot, you get what you got tonight. That's what happens. So, I don't know. I don't know. As long as the Lakers continue to uh, structure this thing poorly and make these type of decisions and ignore the mistakes and ignore what's going on down there, and they can continue to look bad and continue to be bad, and it's going to be continued to waste of time for, for LeBron James to be on his team. It's cut and dry. It is what it is. He's wasting his time. And I'm not, I'm not one of those people that's going to lie about that. So, yeah, Christmas Day had a lot to be encouraged by in this, in this one game, even though we didn't win it. Came down to one possession, even though we were down by 23 at one point. All in all, we couldn't cut it. Because the guys we pay the most couldn't execute. Period. I just, I'm tired of of of, of uh, sugarcoating it, man. We just ain't good enough. You're not good enough for the holes that we have through our roster. So, you must trade Russell Westbrook. Okay? I don't care how you do it. I don't care what you do it for. You just got to get him out of here so you can create... More cap space. Two max contracts is all you can use in the pandemic era. That's it. Anybody who tries to do three is setting themselves up for failure. It doesn't work so long as COVID protocol exists. No three contracts. Get it out of here. Get it out of here now. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Say, well, I don't know if this is a good deal. Any deal that is going to get Westbrook's contract out of here is the deal you make. That's what I'm talking about. That's how serious this is. This is about how bad we're going to look over the next several years. And the only way we're going to salvage our situation is if we build it properly. Because ain't no pick coming from our failures. That's the thing. There's no pick. We're going to give it straight to the New Orleans Pelicans. And whoever that is, that's going to be in, who would otherwise be on our team, will be playing for them. So, there's no pick. You can't tank. So, Lakers got to do what they got to do. That means getting Russell the hell up out of here. I'm not even going to be nice about it no more after tonight. I don't care. I'm not interested. This is my team, and we suck. And that's that, man. My name is BDL44. I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas, and I'm out.